Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat, mga minamahal kong mga kapatid sa Panginoon. Ito po ang inyong lingkod, si Pastor Ruel Camia po, mula po dito sa Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Para po sa ating pag-aaral ng Salita ng Diyos ngayon pong umaga, welcome po sa Tinig ng Pag-asa. Humihingi po ako ng paumanhin, medyo nalate po tayo ng simula sa itinakda nating oras. Gayun paman, ay nagpapasalamat po ako sa Panginoon sapagkat Minsan pa ay binigyan tayo ng pagkakataong makapag-aral ng kanyang mga salita. Araw po ng biyernes at ang ating pong pag-aaralan ay pinamagatan ko pong failure is not final. Pagpalain ng Panginoon ang pag-aaral na ito sa mahampunin niyo ako sa talata na ating pong pagbubulayan. Mahabang pagbasa po ito, actually ang ating pong pag-aaral ay nakatuon sa Matthew 26 31 to 75 But I may not read all the verses Dahil masyado pong mahaba Inaanyayahan ko na lamang po kayo Nabasahin nyo po ang buong mga talatang ito Mula Matthew 26, 31 hanggang 75 But I will be reading from verses 31 to 35 na lang po no, Hanggang 35 no po, Sorry po, hindi po 75 Sabi po dyan Then Jesus told them this very night, You will all fall away on account of me. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. Truly I tell you, Jesus answered, This very night, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, even if all, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. Pagpalain ng Panginoon ang pagkabasang ito ng kanyang bandal na salita na ating pagbubulayan. Again, ang aking pakiusap, later or habang pinag-aaralan po natin ito, buksan nyo ang Bible ninyo at sundan po natin ang mga succeeding verses hanggang verse 75. Mga minamahal na mga, mangu, mga, mga magulang at mga kapatid, we live in a world where popular culture, celebrities, and public speakers says that if you chase your dreams, you will achieve them. Hindi po siguro isa o dalawang beses ninyong narinig na ang mga bagay na ito, especially sa mga pulpito ng mga F. Ano po yung mga F na yon? Yung mga fellowship, yung mga churches na kung saan nagtatago doon sa pangalang fellowship. Most of the time, they preach about chasing your dreams, achieving your goal. And this message of chasing your dreams, and by chasing it, you will get 100% result. It is a guarantee that you will be successful at whatever you strive for as long as you chase your dream. Pero mayroong isang problema po doon sa sa <clears throat> mensahe ng chasing your dream hindi nila itinuturo na part ng pag paghabol doon sa ating mga dreams ay ang failure may mga pagkakataon na hindi nila binabanggit na ang pag-abot ng mga pangarap ay minsan or madalas na sa pamamagitan ng pagdaan sa mga failure ng buhay the world Culture does not talk about failure and the conditions that can sometimes apply. Po, alam niyo po mga kapatid, mula pagkabata, at ako ngayon ay 56 years old na. Sasabihin ko po sa inyo na mas marami akong natutunan sa pagkakamali kaysa doon sa mga bagay na natutunan ko sa hindi pagkakamali. Naniniwala po ako na mas matindi ang diin mas matindi ang pagkatuto sa mga bagay na ipinagkamali natin. I failed most of the time. And one thing that I do praise the Lord for is because sa mga failure na yon meron akong natutunan at ang katotohanan na ang failure is not final. Amen? Failure is not final. We all experience failures in life. Like, On our text this morning, the night that Jesus Christ was arrested, two of his disciples had massive failures. 
Una si Judas, he, he betrayed the Lord Jesus. Si Peter, he, he, failed, he failed on denying, oh, he failed by denying the Lord three times. They both denied Christ. Judas rejected the mercy of God and later went on and he took his life. But Peter accepted the mercy of God and later went out and became the leader of the church. Mahalagang pag-aralan natin ito. Ano po? We all experience failures in life. Kaya we are going to look at Peter, Peter's failure and see what causes personal failure in life. Ano-ano ba nagiging cause, kadahilanan why we fail? We are going to look at three things. One, we are going to look at what Peter did wrong. Then, we are going to look at what Peter did right. And the last, how Jesus look at our failure. So, alam nyo na, three points po ang ating bibigyan ng diin. We are going to look at what Peter did wrong. Anong kanyang naging pagkakamali? At ano naman yung mga bagay na ginawa ni Peter na tama para bumangon sa kanyang pagkakamali? At anong ginawa ng Panginoong Heso Kristo? How does Jesus look at our failure? Paano ba tinitingnan ng Panginoon ang ating mga pagkakamali? Now, let us go to the message. Let us look at the three failures of Peter. Number one. One failure. We are going to see uh, those three. And the first is, we overestimate our strengths. Isa po ito sa pangunahing naging failure ni Peter. At mababasa po natin ito sa Matthew 26, 31 to 35. Ano po ang sabi niya sa talata? Then Jesus told them, This very night you will all fall away on account of me. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. Sinabi na ng Panginoon, Nagsisinungaling ba si Jesus dyan? All-knowing po ang Panginoon and He planned everything And because He planned everything, He is the Sovereign Lord, sinasabi na niya sa kanyang mga alagad kung ano ang magaganap. Pero ano po ang nangyari? Ano po? Sinabi na niya, uh, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered, but after I have risen, I will go ahead of you in Galilee. Jesus is foretelling what will happen. Pero ano po ang sabi po niya? Verse 33, Peter replied, Sumagot si Peter. At ang sabi ni Peter, Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. Inulit pa ng Panginoon sa verse 34, Truly I tell you, Truly, hindi ako nagsisinungaling. Sinasabi ko na sa iyo ang totoo. This very night, Before the rooster crows, Ngayong gabi, Sa oras na to na sinasabi ko sa inyo, Ngayong gabi, You will disown me three times. But again, Peter declared, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. Alam nyo minsan mga kapatid, yung kayabangan, yung pagiging uh, laging nakatitiyak na sinasabi niya, nagagawin niya, nakakahawa yan. Nung sinabi ni Peter na I will never disown you, yung kanyang mga kasama, other disciples said the same. Yung kayabangan nakakahawa, kaya wag daw magsasasama sa mga mayayabang, maahawa ka. Katulad din daw yung huwag ka magsasama sa mga mainitin ng ulo. Huwag ka magsasama doon sa, sa mga lasinggero, sa mga may bisyo, mahahawa ka. Diyan po sa pagkakataon yan, pinakikita sa atin, nakakahawa talaga si Peter, nakahawa. But I would like us to consider the verses. Jesus said, when they arrest me, you are going to fall away. Pero ano sabi nila? Take note, hindi lang po si Peter, kundi nila. Sa huling talata ng verse 35, all the other disciples said the same. Notice on the verses na yung mga alagad sa huling bahagi sila nag-agree kay Peter. But it was Peter who overestimated himself na nagsabi sa verse 33, I will never leave you. Peter replied, even if all Fall away on account of you, I never will. Tapos umulit pa si Jesus, sinabi uli ni Peter, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. 
So, tapos nag-agree pa siya sa sinabi ng pangatlo. Kaya three times, kung titingnan natin, dito pa lang, three times na ipinagyayabang ni Peter ang kanyang kakayahan not to disown the Lord, not to abandon the Lord. Three times, Peter says, I will never fall away, I will never disown you, we will never fall away. This is overestimating our strength. Alam niyo mga kapatid, a lot of people fail because of overestimating their strength. Many businesses fail, battle are lost, students fail in college, all because they overestimate their strength. Alam ko na ika yan, napag-aralan ko na yan. Naku, hindi na ako magkakamali. Alam ko na yan, malakas na ako. Ay, ito sigurado, sure win. Yung mga nag invest sa pag-asa na siguradong kikita ang most of the time ang nascam, ang nadadaya, ang nahuhulog sa patibong ng mga bulaan at ng mapaglinlang. So makikita po natin yan. A lot of people fail because of overestimating their strengths. One of the reason or reasons we have failures in life is because we think we are stronger than we are all, than we really are. Amen? So, don't be self-confident. None of us is exempt. Given the right situation, I am capable of any sin, and so are you. Sabi po ni Oswald Chambers, an unguarded strength is a double weakness. A double weakness. An unguarded strength is a double weakness. Yun daw hong kalakasang hindi nababantayan, kalaunan ay nagiging dalawang kahinaan. And many people fail in life because of overestimating their strength. Alam niyo po ba yung six-day war ng Israel? Akala ho ng mga Arab nation, Palibasa sila ay powerful, marami silang mga bansa, pinalibutan ng bansang Israel, pero anim na araw, natalo silang lahat dahil na overestimate nila ang kanilang kalakasan. Hindi nila nakita ang paparating na surpresang ginawa ng bansang Israel. Nang pinalipad ng Israel ang kanilang mga eroplano, binomba ang mga palipara ng mga bansang ito. No, just Google it, go to YouTube and you can watch how Israel won that war against those countries that surrounds them. So tandaan natin, an unguarded strength is a double weakness. So in the in the very area you think there is no way you can mess up, you are getting yourself up for failure. The very area you may have had a major victory may be exactly where you stumble next. And this what happened also to the Israelites nang na, naigupo nila ang pader ng Jericho. Akala nila, kayang-kaya na nila ang lahat. Sumunod na digmaan ay ang maliit na bayan ng high. Ano po nangyari sa kanila? Natalo po sila ng maliit na bayan na ito. Nagtakbuhan po ang bansang Israel dahil sa takot na sila'y malulupig. So they overestimated their strength because ano bang ginawa nila sa Jericho? Ihip lang ng trompeta at sigaw lang gumuho yung yung pader. At ang akala nila dahil sa kanilang kakayahan, sa kanilang kapangyarihan, nangyari yon, ganun din ang ginawa nila na buong kumpiyansa na mapagtatagumpayan ang hay. Pero hindi Meron pa isang illustration na kamakainan lang na panood ko at ginamit kong illustration sa isang uh, mensahe sa, sa Winnipeg Unida noong January 8, 2022. I don't know kung kilala nyo po yung, yung atlet na ang pangalan ay Van Aert. Siya po ay 27-year-old Belgian professional cyclist. Three times na po siyang world champion. So sa noong January 8, 2022, No po? Siya po ang nangunguna into the final straight and pulled away from the chasing pack. Nung malapit na po siya sa finish line, itinas po niya ang kanyang kamay in celebration. 
before he had crossed the line. Van Aert immediately realized his blunder as David Gaudu. Yan po yung humahabol sa kanya. David Gaudu snatched the stage victory. Ano po ang tanong ng commentary sa kanya, ang tanong ng mga ng mga reporter, but mo ginawa yun? Why did you raise your hands too early? Ang sagot po ni Van Aert, na po, it was a rookie mistake. That was he told to the reporters. It was a rookie mistake. Mga kapatid, we fail when we overestimate our strength and Peter overestimated his strength. Pangalawa, another failure of Peter is we fear the, the as disapproval approval of others. Yung takot sa sasabihin ng iba. Isa ito sa naging failure pa ni Peter. Yung kanyang takot sa opinion, sa sasabihin, sa disapproval ng ibang mga tao. Lalo na pong itong delikado doon sa mga people pleasers. Marami pong tao na talagang ang laging iniisip eh, ano kaya sasabihin nito, ano kaya sasabihin nun, ano kaya sasabihin ng kapitbahay, nabubuhay sa sasabihin ng iba. Most of our failures in life ay dahil sa takot sa sasabihin ng iba. Kaya hindi tayo maka, maka, makapagtagumpay. Kaya hindi natin maabot yung mga bagay na dapat nating gawin dahil sa takot sa sasabihin ng iba. So worrying about other people's acceptance is a stronghold to overcome. When we make decision based on what other people would think, ano pong mangyayari? We are sowing the seeds of failure in our life. Marami pong ganyan, di mo yan kaya, di mo yan magagawa, wala kang kakayahan at dahil po doon sa mga opinion na yon, nanatili ka na nga lang na walang kakayahan. For so many years, na po, marami po sanang pagtatagumpay sa buhay ng simbahan, sa buhay ng iglesia, pero mas pinakikinggan ang sinasabi ng iba na hindi nyo yan kaya, wala kayong magagawa, kaya po hindi nangyayari. And Peter struggled with this fear of disapproval. No, Peter struggled with people pleasing in his life. San po natin mababasa yan? Sabi po ng talata, Matthew 26:58, But Peter followed him at a distance. Dun pa lamang po, kita na natin ang problema eh. Peter no longer want to be associated with Christ. So he just followed him from a distance. Right up to the courtyard of the high priest. He entered and sat down with the guards to see the outcome. So sumama siya sa Panginoon, pero nung si Jesus malapit na doon sa courtyard ng mga high priest, ano ginawa? Kumawang na po itong si Peter. Bakit? Ito po sa verse 20, sa verse 69 and 17 ng chapter 26. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said. Ano pong sabi ni Peter? Verse 70. But he denied it before them all, not only to the girl, but to, to them all. He denied it before them all. Sa lahat ng taong nakikinig doon, sa lahat ng taong present doon, natakot siyang amining siya po'y kasama ni Jesus, natakot siyang amining alagad siya ni Jesus at ang sabi niya, I don't know what you are talking about, he said. Peter has just been three and a half years with Jesus Christ. He has lived with him, but when the crisis in life appears, I don't even know what you are talking about, Peter says. He is more afraid of what other people think than he is about identifying with Christ. So, sa text natin, Peter struggled with the people-pleaser's mindset. One time, people rebuked him. Or Apostle Paul rebuked him in the book of Acts sa Antioquia. 
Dumalo po si Peter kasama niya. Kasama po niya si si Paul nung sila nasa sa Antioquia. May mga dumating po ng mga Hudyo galing po sa Jerusalem. Noong dumating po itong mga Hudyo na ito, ang ginawa po nila, nagtuli sila ng nagtuli. O tinuli nila ng tinuli yung mga Gentiles. At si, si Peter nakiagree sa mga leader na ito from Jerusalem, nagalit si Paul. Nagalit si Apostol Pablo. At nag-away po sila kasi po itong si Peter nakikipag-compromise. Nung una, nakikihalo siya at nakikisali sa mga Gentiles. Nakikipag-fellowship siya sa mga Gentiles. Pero nung dumating na yung mga hudyong ito, nagaling ng Jerusalem, kumawang siya dun sa mga Gentiles dahil nahihiya siyang ma-identified sa mga Gentiles. Kaya sinaway siya, nagkaroon sila ng matinding pagtatalo ni Paul. Yan po si Peter. Meron siyang personality na ma-please ang mga tao. Kaya kapatid, dito po sasabihin ko sa iyo, kung ikaw ay isang leader ng simbahan at wala ka nang iniisip kundi ang opinion ng mga tao, wala kang mararating, mako-compromise ka. Pati sa mga mensahe, pati sa sermon, sa mga turo, mako-compromise ka. Kung ang iisipin mo lagi ay ang approval ng mga taong ito. Patitigil ka sa ministeryo kung katatakutan mo ang kanilang disapproval. Tandaan niyo po yan. Wala kayong ipamamana kundi ang takot. Wala kayong ipamamana kung hindi ang kahihiyan na, 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 sala, na sawayin. At wala kayong madadala sa inyong pagpanaw kung hindi ang katagang mabait yung pastor namin. Walang iniisip yan kundi ang opinion ng iba. <laughs> hindi na bali ho. Hindi na bali hindi ako maalala. Pero kung maaalala lang po ako dahil ako ay naging men or people pleasers, hindi na hubale. At hindi na hubale na maaalala ako pagdating ng araw na yung pastor na yan masakit magsalita yan. Yang pastor na yan, masakit mag-sermon yan. Okay na po ako doon. At least, alam ko sa aking sarili na hindi ako naging people pleaser. And I am not afraid of this approval from other people. As long as I know that what I am preaching is the word of God. May problema si Peter dito at ito ang kanyang naging failure. Ano po ang sabi ng Proverbs 29.25? Fear of man will prove to be snare. Yung takot sa tao ay patibong. But whoever trust in the Lord is kept safe. Patibong ika ang approval ng tao. Pero yung nagtitiwala sa Panginoon ay ligtas. People pleasing will cost your peace. People pleasing will mask your identity and surrender your destiny. People pleasers inevitably please the wrong people. We fail when we live to please people. We are to live for God's approval, seek to please God first. Amen? Tandaan ninyo mga kapatid, ang kahinaan ng ministeryo ng isang pastor ay nakasalalay doon sa kanyang takot na ma, na ma disapprove yung mga taong kanyang pinaglilingkuran. Ang tagumpay ng ministeryo ng pastor ay ang desire na ang ma-approve ay ang kalooban lang ng Diyos at mamuhay ayon sa God's approval at ang hanapin lagi ay ang makapagpapasaya hindi sa tao kung hindi sa Diyos na ating pinaglilingkuran. Amen? Ano pa ho ang isa sa failure ni Peter? Maliban dyan. Three failures of Peter. Number three, speaking without thinking. <laughs> Hindi nag-iisip. Kuda lang ng kuda. Salita lang ng salita. Hindi iniisip ang kanyang sinasabi. Alam nyo, Lahat naman tayo madalas nagkakamali dyan. We speak impulsively, rashly, and in a haste. We speak thoughtlessly 
and don't pose to gauge the damage of what we are about to say. No? Misan po, you just say whatever you feel. And that is a clear mark of immaturity. Mga bata lang po gumagawa nun. They say whatever they feel. Yung adults need to learn to have control over their mouths. When you feel envy, you speak in envy. When you feel jealousy, you will speak in jealousy. When you feel insecure, you may say things that reveal your insecurity. When you are frustrated and when you are angry, you say things in anger. When you are afraid, you say things in fear, not even thinking about the consequences. And take note, one of the reasons we have many failures in our life is that we speak without thinking. Amen? So, Peter here is clearly nervous. Peter is fearful. Jesus Christ has, has been arrested. Then all of a sudden, comes the strangers at ang sabi ng strangers, You are with him. Ano sagot ni Peter? I am not. Why? Because he is worried about what other people would think. And now, his angers comes out. His anger comes out. Ano po sabi sa Matthew 26? Verse 71 to 74. Then he went out to the gateway where another servant girl. Take note, this is not the same girl. This is another girl. Who saw him and said to the people there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. Verse 72. He denied it again with an oath. So idininay niya ngayon may pagsumpa pa. No? I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses. No, kanina, oath. Ngayon, sumpa na. And he swore to them. Sumusumpa ako. Hindi ko talaga kilala ang taong yan. Immediately, a rooster crowed. So, he is speaking without thinking. The Bible says this causes so many problems in our lives. We overestimate our strength. We fear the disapproval of others. And third, like Peter, we speak without thinking. Amen? Now, what that is, what Peter did wrong and he failed. Once he failed, he actually did several things right. Hindi naman po final lang failure. Amen? Yan po yung topic at pamagat ng ating pag-aaral. Hindi naman ibig sabihin, pag nag-fail eh, tapos na. Anong ginawa ni Peter na tama? Sa kanyang kamaliang ito, ano ang kanyang ginawa? Three things. Kanina tatlong bagay. Ngayon tatlong bagay din. Hindi na na mali. Hindi na mali kundi tama. Three things Peter did right. One, he grieved in failure. He grieved in failure. Alam niyo po mga kapatid, grief is a good thing. Yung pagtangis ay mabuti. It is the way we get through failure and we learn our lessons. And to get past your pain, you got to go through the pain. Mawabasa natin sa Matthew 26, 27, 75. Brother, ano sabi dyan? Then Peter remembered. Tanong, ano naalala ni Peter? So Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Kaya napakahalaga mga kapatid. Napakahalaga ng meron kang maaalala. Ano yun? Yung salita ng Diyos. Sa failure natin sa buhay, Inevitable ito. We will fail at some point. Maaaring nasa failure ka ngayon. Kapatid, maaaring hindi mo na alam kung ano ang gagawin mo. Bunga ng isang bagay na iyong naging desisyon at it cause you a lot of pain. Anong dapat gawin? Like Peter, we need to remember. Sapagkat yung pagkaalala, Sa salita ng Diyos, 
yung pagkaalala sa sinabi ng Panginoon ay magdudulot ng ano? Sabi sa talata, And he went outside and wept bitterly. Tanong, kung hindi ba niya narinig si Jesus na nagsalita niya, maaalala niya yan? Hindi. Kaya kapatid, ikaw, hindi ka dadalhin talaga sa tunay na pagsisisi kung hindi mo alam ang salita ng Diyos. And I'm talking to you Christians. I'm talking to you believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is how important we need to learn, study the Word of God. For what reason? Para may maalala tayo. Paano ka may maalala kung di mo naman alam? And most of our failures in life na hindi tayo madala sa pagsisisi, hindi tayo madala sa kalungkutan sa nagawa nating pagkakamali dahil wala tayong maalala. Wala kang salita ng Diyos na pwede mong gunitain. Bakit? Eh, hindi ka naman nagbabasa. Hindi ka naman nag-aaral. Kaya lamang na lamang, take note, lamang na lamang sa mga pagsubok ng buhay, sa mga problema, sa trial, sa sufferings, yung mga taong laging may kargang salita ng Diyos sa kanilang mga isipan. Bakit? Sa panahon ng kabigatan, maging sa panahon ng failure, meron silang mahaalalang sinabi ng Panginoon. Amen? Kaya Bible study is a must. Reading the scripture is a must. Continuously meditating upon the word of the Lord is a must. Wala kang maaalala kung wala kang narinig. Wala kang maaalala kung wala kang alam na sinabi ng Panginoon. Amen? Wala kang handle. Wala kang mapanghahawakan. At dito po mga kapatid, yun ang unang naalala ni Pedro nung tumilaok ang manok. He wept bitterly. And that is grieving. Now imagine how disappointed Peter must have felt himself. It was Jesus. Yet the first time no, na ibinigay ni Peter yung kanyang buhay, sumunod, sumunod siya. Sinabi niya sa Panginoon three times, I will never disown you. I will never abandon you. At dito three times din na kanyang ipinagkanulo ang Panginoon. At dahil doon, naalala niya yon. No. Mga kapatid, grief is a good thing. Grieving is a good thing. It is the key to healing. Amen? Eh, marami lang ho, magaling umiyak. Marami lang ho, magaling magdrama. Pero yung totoong pagtangis, bunga ng kamalian, No? Yung pagtangis, bunga ng pag-amin sa kasalanan, nakagagamot yan mga kapatid. Grief is the way we get through transitions and loses the, and, and losses and uh, even the failure. Nakaka-transition tayo mula sa pagkalugi, mula sa pagkatalo, mula sa failure ng ating mga buhay. You cannot force healing. You cannot rush healing. You cannot will it by sheer willpower. Misa sabi natin, I'm going to be different now. I will not do it again. You cannot do it yourself. Huwag niyo pong kakalimutan, mga minamahal kong mga kapatid, recovery is an act of God's mercy. Healing is an act of mercy and it comes slowly with time. Tingnan niyo po yung talata. Ano po? Ano po ang sabi diyan? The Bible says when Peter heard the rooster crow, he wept bitterly. I imagine that every time for the rest of Peter's life, kapag nakakarinig siya ng tilaok ng manok, it probably reminded him his biggest failure in life. Amen. Naalala nyo rin po ba yun mga kapatid? Meron pong tinatawag na triggering mechanism. Yung mga failure natin, may mga triggering mechanism yan. Misan po, tugtog, kanta. Diba, failed relationship. May mga failed relationship tayo na minsan pinanghinayangan natin. 
na minsan ipinapaalala ng isang kanta, ipinapaalala ng isang senaryo, ipinapaalala ng isang lugar, ipinapaalala ng isang tula, o kung ano pa man, minsan po, kulay. Alam niyo po, ganyan eh, di ba? Laging may triggering factor yan. And we have triggers in life. There are certain things when we hear them or smell them or think about them or listen to them or whatever, it triggers the memory of our failures. Now, can you stop the triggers? No! Can you stop those triggers? You cannot. Masasalubong mo to, makikita mo to, mangyayari yon at babalik. You will remember the failures. But you can stop what they do to you. You cannot stop the triggers, but you can stop what the triggers intended for you. Your choice is, will I choose to focus on my mistakes? Or will I choose to focus on God's forgiveness? Choose to, for, to choose God's mercy and God's grace. That is a choice. And that is what you can do. Misan, pinipili natin yung magmukmuk doon sa pain. Magmukmuk doon sa failure. Magmukmuk doon sa mistakes. Where you can choose to focus on God's mercy. To focus on God's forgiveness. And to focus on God's grace. Alam niyo po, Satan wants you to focus on your pain and manipulate you with all kinds of memory triggers. And instantaneously, ano pong nangyayari? Magbabalik ka dun sa wallowing pain of the failure. Mahusay po si satanas dyan. Po. At yun po ang madalas niyang instrumento sa buhay natin para wag tayong magtagumpay. Wala ka na magagawa, failure ka na. Hindi ka na makaka-recover dyan. Hindi po ba? Ano po ang sabi ng Mark chapter 16 verse 10? Grief is a good thing, is the key to healing. You cannot force healing, you cannot rush healing. Binanggit ko na po ito kanina. Recovery is an act of God's mercy. Healing is an act of mercy. And it comes slowly with time. Ano po ang ginawa ni Peter? Pangatlo. Ah, pangalawa pa lang po pala. He gets support. Now, how do you get support from other people? See how Peter got support. Ano po? Anong ginawa niya? Sabi po sa Mark chapter 16 verse 10. Tingnan niyo po ang nangyari dito. Sabi po sa Mark 16 10, He went and told those who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping. So he went. So sa failure natin, ang pinaka devastate, sorry, ang pinaka devastating ay yung magmukmuka because you failed. Meron po ako naririnig, misa nagtatangka pang magpatiwakal because of failure. Misan po, gusto nang takasan yung failure. They run away because of their failure. Pero dito po sa Mark 16, makikita po natin, she went and told those who have been with him who were mourning and weeping. Sino yan? Yan po ay si Mary Magdalene. No po? And the other women went and saw the open tomb of Jesus. Nung mailibing na si Jesus, if you're going to look at those verses, nung mailibing na po si Jesus, yung mga babae pumunta sa, sa pinaglibingan. Nakita nila dun eh, open na yung tomb. Wala na si Jesus. So ano na ginawa nila? She went and told those who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping. John 20, on the evening of, of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, ano po nangyari? With the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Kung titignan po natin yung mga nagmamahal sa Panginoong Heso Kristo, yung totoong kanyang mga disipulo, nung siya po ay naipako, namatay, inilibing, nagpatuloy po sila sa pagtitipon. They supported each other. They supported 
each other on their grief. On that same evening, that, that very first day of the week, hindi sila nagiwahiwalay. The disciples were together. John 20, 26, a week later, his disciples were in the house again. Ano pong ipinakikita nito? Kahit po nung namatay na ang Panginoon, kahit po nung nailibing na siya, nung nabuhay siya sa mga patay, lalo po silang hindi tumigil sa pagtitipon. Kahit po late yan si Tomas, kasi nung unang pagtitipon, absent siya. Makikita po natin sa John 20, 26, a week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Nandun na po si Thomas. Nung una, wala siya siguro nung nagpakita ang Panginoon. But this time, present na po siya. Mahalaga po yun. Sapagkat ang pagsasama-sama nakaka-encourage sa pagsasama-sama ng mga magkakapatid, ang himala ng Panginoon ay nagaganap. Ang healing ay nagaganap. Whether it is an emotional healing. Kaya, napakahalaga mga kapatid. In fact, for the next 50 days after Peter's big failure and after the cross and the resurrection, they were all together. They pretty much just hung out together kind of processing what in the world did we just go through. Namatay ang ating leader, namatay ang Panginoon, pero siya muling nabuhay. The very first thing Jesus did when He started His ministry is to form this group. He called the disciples in order for them to carry each other's burden. Kaya huwag niyo, mga, huwag niyo pong kakalimutan mga kapatid, all Christianity for 300 years was done in small groups. When you go through a major failure in your life, you must resist the urge, the urge, the desire to isolate yourself. When you go through a major failure in life, you must resist the urge to insulate yourself. Do you know when you share a problem in your life, it is cut in half? The burden is cut in half. And when you share your joy, your joy is doubled. Amen? Kaya kapatid, huwag mo sasarilinin. Misa nakakala natin, wala nang solusyon eh. Pero misa ang solusyon ay nasa kamay ng iba. Marahil ang solusyon ay padadaanin ng Diyos sa iba. Kaya we need to share the burden. Find support. Tanda mo kapatid, you were never meant to go through life on your own. You are never meant to go through life by yourself. We were better together. We were meant for community. That is the value of a church. The best time to build a support network in your life is before the crisis. So that when the crisis hit, you have a network of support. Amen? And take note, you are going to have some challenges in your life. Inevitable yan. You are going to have some pain in your life. We have losses, we have deaths, we have illnesses in this world. The time to get your social support system, the time to build a small group is now. Not in the crisis. It's a little late by then. So you better start your network right now. Join the small group. Join the Bible study group. Join the church. Peter grieved. Peter went to his support group. Two things that was right that Peter did. Pangatlo, natamang bagay na ginawa ni Peter. He cast himself on God's mercy. And this is also the challenge to us. When you fail, Cast yourself on God's mercy. Ilang episode ang sinulat ni Peter? Dalawa lang naman. First Peter, Second Peter. Pero alam niyo po mga kapatid, in First Peter, he starts the whole book talking about how God has shown him mercy. 
1 Peter 1.3, ano po sabi niya? Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth. Can you imagine? Pati ang pagiging born na niya, mercy, habag ng Diyos. Amen? Kaya, napakahalaga na makita natin yung biyaya, yung habag ng Diyos, and i-cast natin ang ating mga buhay doon. Peter has received mercy. This fills us with a living hope. Now, Peter has had a massive failure in his life, but he is not going around in despair. Why? Sabi niya, I am walking around in hope. In spite of my failure, my life is filled with hope. Why? Dahil ba magaling siya? Dahil ba malakas siya? Dahil matalino siya? No. Because of the mercy of God. And because of the mercy of God, ano sabi niya? 1 Peter 5.7 Sabi niya, Cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. Now, why did Peter tell people to do that? Because that is what he did when he failed. He just cast all his anxiety and cast means take your anxiety and drop them. You just let it go. Give it to God. Just say to Him, God, I'm dropping my fear, my insecurity, my guilt, my shame because you are loving and merciful, God. I'm just going to drop it all on you. Alam niyo yung check-in baggage? Yung check-in baggage, punta ka sa airport. Meron kayong check-in baggage, di ba? Luggage. Ibibigay niyo lang yun doon. Ibibigyan lang kayo ng kapirasong ticket na kung saan baggage claim ang tawag doon. Iwanan niyo na yun doon sa karo sa conveyor. Dadali na po yun sa aeroplano na sasakyan mo. Pinagkakatiwala mo na doon sa bababaan mo, makikita mo doon yung bagahe mo. Ikaw ba kapatid, kapag nasa aeroplano, wala kayo iniisip kundi yung bagahe mo. Naku, yung bagahe ko, saan na kaya napunta? <laughs> Di ba? You just cast the baggage to the baggage counter. Huwag mo na isipin yun. Sagot na nila yon. Huwag mong piliting pasanin yung baggage mo, hindi ka nila papayagan. Huwag mong hayaan, dalihin mo, ikandungin mo sa aeroplano yung baggage mo, hindi papayag ang stewardess. Kailangan mo ipagkatiwala sa kanila yun. When you cast your care, you lose your despair. Because when Jesus moves into action, He will do everything for you. Now, yun po yung tatlong bagay na ginawa ni Peter. Ngayon, ano naman yung tatlong bagay na ginawa ng Panginoon? Three things Jesus does with our failures. Ito yung bagay na hindi natin kayang gawin. Three things Jesus does. One, Jesus prays for us. Luke chapter 22, 31 to 32. Simon, Simon, look at the tenderness. Ini-highlight ko po ito eh. Yung pangalan kapag inuulit, Pagpapakita po yun ng endearment eh. Yung tenderness in God's voice of mercy. Simon, Simon. Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat. Sasalain kayo. Parang trigo. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. Alam niyo po, isa yan sa priestly work of Christ. Iba, yan yung office ni Jesus eh. King, prophet, and then priest. At yung priest, siya po yung naghahandog, di po ba? Yun ang work ng priest. At siya yung nag intercede Two functions of the priest. The priest offered the sacrifice and then he will kneel down and prayed. And pray to the, for the people. That is the work of the priest. And Jesus here exercising his priestly duty. When he told Peter that he will be praying for him. Jesus told P Peter before he had even failed. Peter, this is going to happen but I have already prayed for you that your faith will not fail. 
Hebrews 7.25 Therefore He is able to save completely those who come to God through Him because He always lived to intercede for them. Look at the word always. He always continues yan, magpahanga ngayon. Kaya mga kapatid, even on our failure, we need to believe and be reminded that we have an intercessor. The Bible says Jesus is interceding for you. He is praying for you, for your temptations, for the failures you have had, and for the ones you are going to have tomorrow and the next day. Napakagandang kataga, Peter, Simon, I have already prayed for you before you even failed. I have prayed that you might, that you will make it through this. That is the mercy of God. Amen? Jesus prays for us. That is what Christ does. Second, Jesus shows us mercy. Jesus does not does not add to our guilt. When we fail, God shows mercy. Look at what happened after the resurrection. Sabi ng talata, Afterward, Jesus appeared again to His disciples by the Sea of Galilee. Afterward. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And that is a sign, a statement of depression. Babalik na ako sa pangingisda. Mangingisda na ako. Sama kayo. <laughs> Alam niyo po mga kapatid, si Peter ang hilig makahawan yan eh. Dito sa pagkakataong ito, nakahawa na naman siya. Ano sabi ng mga alagad? We will go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night, they caught nothing. They, they caught nothing. Peter says, I have not recovered from this trauma. It has been two weeks since my biggest failure in life. I am going to fish. Anybody wants to go with me? So they went out and got into the boat. But that night, they got nothing. Naranasan nyo na po ba yun mga kapatid? Misan, yung failure natin parang it added to the dilemma. Di tayo makamove on, move on. Yung failure natin, nanganganak pa ng another failure. Take note, Peter was a professional fisherman and some of the disciples. And I guess yung mga sumama sa kanya na sumama kay Peter, yun yung mga mangis da rin. If anybody should cut, catch fish, professional fishermen. We fish all night but caught nothing. That is the word. And that is another failure. Pero ano pong nangyari? John 21, 4 to 6. John 21, verse 7. John 21, 9 to 10. Ano pong sabi? Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you, haven't you any fish? No, they answered, he said. Then he said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to. To hold the net because of the large number of fish. You may have fish all night and caught nothing, but God can do more in five minutes in your life than you can do in your 20 years of planning. Just leave it to God. God can do more in your life in a few seconds if you will just obey Him that you can do on your own schemes and plans. Jesus shows us mercy. He will help us to recover. Amen? In John 21, 7, Then the disciples whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. 
Si John yun, ano po? Sabi ni John, Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him, it is the Lord. He wrapped his outer garment around him for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat towing the net full of fish for they were not far from shore about a hundred yards. John goes, it's the Lord and it says when Peter realized he wrapped his outer garment around him and jumped into the water. John 21, 9-10 When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. Jesus has got a barbecue going on here at the side of the Lake of Galilee. He is cooking fish and bread over charcoal fire. At kung babasahin po natin, tuloy natin ang basa sa verse 11 and John 21. Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish. Ilan ang bilang? 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. That is another miracle because if you know anything about the Bible, you know that they were constantly mending their nets Because they were always breaking. Diba? Nung una silang tinawag, nag-ahayuma sila ng limba, lambat, laging sira. Pero dito, kahit gano'ng karami huli, hindi ito nasira. Jesus said to them in verse 12, hindi ko na po nailagay, ano po? Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask Him, Who are you? For they knew it was the Lord. So, John 21, to 14 Jesus came, took the bread, and gave. And I did the same with the fish. And Jesus did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to His disciples after He was raised from the dead. Tatlong beses din siyang nagpakita kay Pedro. That is a beautiful, tender story of the mercy of God. He is showing... How much He loves them even after their betrayal and denial. He cooks them breakfast. You would not cook somebody who, who, who betrayed you. You will not give fish to anybody who betrayed you. But that is God's mercy. God's mercy towards you is not dependent upon your performance. Kung ganon, wala po tayong magiging kaligtasan. Hindi nakabase sa ating ginawa, sa ating performance, sabi ng Lamentation, Lamentations 22-23, Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for His compassion never fail. They are new every morning, great is your faithfulness. In other words, it never stops, it never ends. The steadfast love of God is unchanging, it is never exhausted, it is Not, it is tirelessly. His mercies never come to an end. Amen? Now, recap natin sagli. Ano ginawa ng Panginoon? When we fail, Jesus prays for us. Pangalawa, He shows us mercy. At panghuli, three things Jesus does with our failure, Jesus used failures to build His church. And I guess this is one of the most important thing that we need to remember. Jesus uses our failure to build His church. John 21, 15, 17 when, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? This is echoing back a statement where at the last supper, Peter had said, I love you more than all of this. And I would never, ever deny you. Yes, Lord, you said, you know that I love you, Jesus said. Feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? 
Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my sheep. Mga minamahal na mga kapatid, the way you show your love for God is by helping other people in the family of God. Three times, ipinaalala ni Jesus that Peter, you have a ministry. A ministry to feed my lambs. A ministry to take care of my sheep. And the ministry to feed them. That is the way you show your love for me. Amen? Mga kapatid, napahaba po ako ngayon, but let me end this message with a couple of questions. Tanong, are you willing or are you following Jesus at a distance like Peter? Do you identify yourself as one among Jesus' followers? Whose opinion matters to you the most? And what failure have you had that God wants to use to build His church? Do not waste your failures. God wants to take your greatest failure and turn it into your greatest success. God wants to take your greatest hurt and turn it into your greatest ministry. Pagpalain po kayo ng Panginoon, Ito po ang inyong lingkod, si Pastor Ruel Camia po. Mula po dito sa Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, para po sa ating pag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos ngayong umaga, dito po sa tinig ng pag-asa. God bless everyone.